Hello everyone, I hope you're having a good day and you're staying safe. I'm Cesa Gill, a legal intern at Lexis and & Company. And today I'm going to be talking about political obligation. Now, the problem of political obligation is one of the most important issues of political um, philosophy. The main question here is that how far, um, when and why an individual is obliged to obey the uh, laws and commands of the political authority. This may also be accomplished by such duties of the citizens such as paying the taxes, uh, political participation and voting and military duties etc. Now what are necessary for the maintenance of political institution? The question of political obligation is very complex and it is very difficult to find any definite answer uh, to it. Different theories have expressed in this regard which try to answer the question, the complicated issue. Now the theories of unlimited obligation. The first theory is the theory of force. Now this theory holds that such individual is too weak to challenge the authority of the state. His political obligation is unlimited. Now, it acknowledges the superior strength of the state and the state is too powerful than the individual and he has no option but to obey the laws and commands. This theory is not based on any moral, mor moral grounds and it does not allow the individual to acquire whether law is right or wrong. He has to follow it either ways. And it does not believe in the willing obedience of people. The second theory is the divine right theory. Now, since God will be binding on all, mor all morals, um, this theory upholds an unlimited political obligation as well. The authority of sovereign is derived from God and hence the obedience to the state is as impressive as obedience to God. Now, this theory also denies any right to the individual to express his judgment. It, is, it's, it establishes political obligation on religion rather than on moral grounds. The third and the last view of uh, the last theory of unlimited obligation is the conservative view. The conservative thinkers uphold the obedience of the state for practical reasons. Now, what are these practical reasons? That state is after is all after a sovereign authority. Advantages of um, obeying the state are way more than denying it. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about the theories of limited obligation. The principle of consent is the first. According to this view, man is born free. Now, does an individual consent can be only prior to the source of political obligation? A man cannot be expected to obey the ruler without his consent. This, the theory of political of the theory of social contract represents the best formulation of this viewprint. Now, modern thinkers are also advocates of this view. The second view is the idealistic view. Now, the idealistic view originally, originally believed in unconditional obligation but later modified its role to caution. It believes that the state is a march of God on earth. Um, the state is an ideal institution and thus the command does uh, command obedience from the people. The state is an institution working for the promotion of a common good and thus its obligation will never lead to welfare or um, welfare for the people only. The third, the third theory is um, the contract theory. According to the contract theory, the state is a product of a contract and therefore obligation is a state that depends on the terms and conditions of the contract. The state comes into existence as a result of the contract entered between the ruler and the ruled. As the state is a product of mutual agreement, um, obedience is dependent on the terms of the contract. People should obey the state only when the state functions regarding to the agreement 
entered upon. Now the theory against um, political obligation is the last topic that we're going to be talking about today and the first is the Marx Marxist view. According to the Marxist view, the state is an organized power of the dominant class. Does the state, thus the class is divided um, society individually and has no political obligation towards the state. The purpose of the state is not to gen is not the general welfare by helping the uh, capitalist um, class to increase their wealth. Now, in a class divided society, state is not a protector of uh, general masses, and it when classless society is achieved um, after revolution, the state will be automatically wittier always. Now, the second is the anarchist view. Now, the anarchist view upholds the concept of a negative political obligation. It advocates abolition of all, um, of all organized authority as well as the state. It argued that um, the state, the governmental authority is illegitimate and because the state is indeed a coercive institution. The last view is the Gandhian view. The Mahatma Gandhi advocated a several, a severe limited, limit, limited political obligation. Now Gandhi's, Gandhiji's proof was on civil disobedience implies deliberately disobeying an unjust um, an unjust authority and breaking the law of and breaking on an unjust law the act of civil obedience should be performed non violently and penalties entitled by the act should be willingly accepted now the true the true objective of civil disobedience was the is the change of heart the authorities concerned thank you so much for watching and i hope you were able to understand um about political obligation my question for the lovely viewers today is that do you think there should be an unlimited obligation or a limited obligation thank you so much for watching again and i hope you have a good day